Okay, so um, I did my social problem on um, adolescents and kind of some of the things that they struggle with and um, some of the things and some of the reasons why they struggle and then um, what people are doing and what you can do to help them. <clears throat> So some of the things that they struggle with, and I'm sure that we all um, are familiar with this because we were in adolescence ourselves, but um, it's like peer pressure was a huge thing, both positive and negative, um, because they're, they're in that stage where it's kind of awkward and um, they are trying to establish themselves. Uh, they are looking, uh, they're, they're looking for it to others and um, just for both positive and negative influences. Uh, and a lot of times it's not really, it's not their own convictions, it's, it's because other people are doing it. Um, another thing that they struggle with is finding their place. Um, <clears throat> just kind of trying to find out uh, who they are. They're, they're starting to notice more things and kind of um, like notice things like what their parents, the difference between what their parents are saying and what their parents are doing. And so then they start. They they're starting to kind of know, like see that their parents are telling them one thing, and then doing another, such as like telling them not to drink. But then they see their parents getting drunk with their friends, and so they're they're trying to. They start noticing those differences. Um, another thing, um, they they're um, establishing like friendships and. A real, like have to uh, they, they struggle a lot with um, being real because like I said they're, they're being influenced by so many different things that a lot of times they because they want to be because they want to find acceptance they find themselves doing things that they that's not really them and doing uh, um, believing things and just kind of changing a lot to find acceptance with their peers and as a result of this because because they're they're changing themselves and um, they they begin to kind of fight over friends like for attention and um, and then relationships um, they take it out like they they try to find attention through relationships and become dependent on not only like girl guy guy girl relationships but also their friendships and then um, they obviously, their friends are still going through the same thing and so they're not reliable and so then they're just kind of an emotional and like just dealing with that and then like the hormones and um, and so that was, that's like a lot of the things that they struggle with and I interviewed three different people. I interviewed Morris McCorvey who is, um, he runs the Westside Community Center um, and he deals with a lot of um, just kind of troubled adolescents and so I wanted to get that angle and then I also interviewed a youth pastor um, and because I wanted to get kind of the, like the other like the quote unquote like they're like kind of they're in a higher class and just um, that type of thing and then I actually interviewed a girl in adolescence and so um, some of the things that Morris and I talked about um, well, it's just kind of like I said, like at this age, like kids are starting to realize the difference between, like, the difference between what their parents are saying and what they're doing, and um, and they they're finding themselves like making these important decisions, like for example, whether or not to drink or to do drugs, and um, because their parents aren't, they don't feel like they could, their parents aren't really giving them very good advice and they don't, they, there's kind of this disconnect between their parents and so they start seeking that from like anyone else including their peers or um, in someone like Morris or um, Danae who I interviewed as the youth pastor at the West Side, or not the West Side, but Grace Community. And, um, and one thing that I thought was really interesting that he brought up is uh, one of the big problems in today with adolescents is the kids are um, their kids are having getting pregnant and stuff at such a young age that you have children raising children, <clears throat> and so um, and that's another reason that's that's where the um, kids are telling telling their kids they're telling kids don't drink you know this isn't right like you don't want to be like me but then 
um, they do want to be like their parents and so then they end up doing that and so um, and then you have parents who are super busy um, they're making lots of money and they have they can provide for the kids but the kids aren't getting one-on-one -on -one tension that they need and so they start seeking that elsewhere and then single parent homes where um, the role, proper roles aren't being being um, filled and so uh, kids are just a mess and not all of them but um, and so uh, so parents are a huge thing like the importance of parenting and walking their kids through this this part of their developmental stage is really crucial and uh, because because parents some parents are not uh, be, are not there for their kids um, this day and age with like technology and um, like TV like sex is everywhere on TV like every commercial like sex sells and uh, <clears throat> and then like young people phones are making it a lot easier um, Danae was talking about how there's this girl this 12 year old girl like was the farthest person that you would think would um, be sexting but she, they they caught her sexting a 17 year old and because phones are making it so easy no one ever knew like no one knew like they didn't expect it and then they found out and then um, one thing I thought was super interesting was uh, Morris was saying how some of his kids are buying or like ordering alcohol with their parents credit card or even with their debit card off the internet and so it's so we, we um, have heard a lot about how like the technology or like video games are um, teaching our kids violence and like I said making the sexual temptations a lot harder because it's just everywhere um, but it's it's making it harder a lot harder on our kids and because the parents aren't as connected with their kids they're not they're not able to they're not monitoring their kids and helping them and so this has become a huge struggle and another thing that TV is doing is, um, and Boris, Boris and I again were talking about this, and he was saying how you have uh, you have adults writing the scripts of these things, and so you have teenagers dressing like adults and acting like adults, and so then kids watching these TV shows um, feel like they're behind, and so they they want to be like that, and so then. They're, they're skipping this important stage of where, yeah, like where it's going to be awkward and that's fine, but it's important to kind of to um, establish who you are and not skip this. So television is not only making the sexual temptations and making light of violent behavior, and te like they're seeing older people deal with like situations violently, but it's also um, pushing them out of the adolescent or pushing them forward and um, because of they have young people their age on TV acting like adults and so it's kind of giving them a false false impression and so <clears throat> we talked about we talked about some of the things with both Danae and um, with Danae and Morris and some of I just kind of asked them like what are some things that that you are doing or people should be doing to help them and one of the big things was just loving them like these kids need love because they're not finding it from their parents and just like being there being someone that they can trust and look up to and um, uh, someone that can fill those roles that aren't being filled um, Danae, Danae used, there's two youth pastors at, or at Grace and um, so she deals with mostly with the girls and um, a lot of those girls like she said that one of the parents moms is just kind of non-existent like their dad is dealing with cancer and so she's just kind of checked out so some of the things that Danae does is she helped her get ready for prom and um, and it's just kind of there not really to fill the role she's not like being her mom but just kind of helping her through this stage and um, just kind of I mean giving her advice but not really while we're still respecting the parents and so and another thing that Morris pointed out was um, 
and that was hard for him in the beginning when he was working with adolescents was um, a lot of like a lot of the girls because their dads are non-existent um, they they're not they don't have someone a positive influence or a positive authority or just someone that they can look up to like telling them that they're beautiful and that you're valued and so because they don't have this they start uh, seeking it in in others and so if you have people in authority like at the schools like coaches and teachers that are not able to hold those boundaries then um, they start they start showing these kids love and then these kids get attached and then that's how um, like inappropriate relationships with younger kids get started because these girls like these girls and young boys are just thinking that like the affirmation and and they don't really they don't see that it's wrong and then the teachers and the like coaches and stuff are taking advantage of that and so he really struggled um, like at first it just kind of freaked him out he's like I don't you know like he didn't he just thought that was weird but then he had to learn how to give these kids like the affirmation and the hug being able to hug them but also um, holding those boundaries and just kind of doing that filling that role that the father is supposed to fill and um, because again because there's such a disconnect between the parents and the adolescents and I think I think a lot too and when you're at a, like when you're going through um, adolescence at least for me I, didn't, I never like I didn't want to talk to my parents I or my siblings because if anything like I, I grew up in like a pretty Christian home and and so if I was struggling with anything I, I really didn't talk to anyone and if I did it was um, people outside of the family um, but and so Morris was saying how he had like he has kids that will show up to his house and um, like at really late at night knocking at his door and they're saying we have a hotel we have condoms we're ready to go all the way do you think we should do it and he's like go ask your parents and he's like well they're like well if I wanted to ask my parents I would have done that so I mean if you don't want to if you don't want to if you think it's okay or if you don't want to give us advice then we'll just go do it and so then he had to, and that was another kind of like wake up call, like um, that he had to be able, like he had to find a balance and being able to um, not really become these kids' father, but be able to give them advice while respecting their parents. And um, I was talking to uh, the girl that, I, the adolescent girl that I interviewed, and um yeah she just said that a lot of a lot of what what she needed and kids her age needed was the love and people to trust and um like help with homework if they needed help, help with homework and um filling out stuff for college and th that's all stuff that morris does in his uh his service is um he has uh like certain time set it, or a certain time of that while they're there set a time preparing them for college and um, like the ACT test and also like filling out applicate like scholarships like there's I forget what it's called but there's this program like this scholarship program do you remember what it's called yeah and that they have to get started with like they have to start when they're really young and so he's helping them with that um, kind of getting them Yeah, and so, <laughs> and so, like, <laughs> so that that was so, that was so, that's so some of the stuff that he does, and um, also a big thing was like helping the kids take away the focus from themselves and just like, and this is something that Carlene even said. Um, she said that it was really important for um, for to have people that were that would help her just kind of take like stay positive and look at the good things despite like the bad things that were happening to her and um, and just look at the positive side of life and discipline was another really important thing she said that her mom um, 
wasn't really, like her mom just kind of was really supportive of whatever their kids wanted. Um, which, and she said it was nice because she felt loved and she loved her mom, but um, she didn't really have any like guidelines or parental guidelines or disciplines. And so, um, and so she just, I mean, she was able to do whatever she wanted. And so, um, <clears throat> so I guess to kind of wrap things up, I think the biggest, one of the biggest things that I learned from um, these interviews and like the research and uh, was, I mean, obviously we're not going to be able to take away technology. There's there's things that we we have to start dealing with, but um, as future parents, I think it's really important to realize that this is going on and um, and have a closer monitor on our kids. And I, I mean, I I think that there's a time. I think that we should we should raise our kids and. Um, like you said, the adolescents, a lot of times, like kids' beliefs aren't their own. And so I think it's really important to um, like very closely monitor that when they're younger. And then as they grow older, kind of um, like uh, give them a phone and, um, and uh, they, have to, they have to learn to um, set up boundaries, but also we're helping them do that and having a close monitor on them and helping like so that they're getting the challenges that they need to get challenged to, that so that they can um, establish their own beliefs and their own standards and obviously it's this is a lot easier said than done um, but I don't think I don't think that we should I don't think the answer is no TV ever no phones no iPads I mean I think it's just really important that we realize that this is a really important um, stage in kids' life and that we need to be there giving them the proper attention and discipline and um, wisdom in that.